Hi guys, my name is Kazungu Duncan from Aero Productions and today I'm going to share with you how to color grade your images like a pro in Photoshop. So in this tutorial we are going to turn this image into this image and I want just to say welcome to the magical world of Photoshop. So without further ado, let's get started. Now first, if I open this group, you realize that it has a number of adjustment layers. And apart from the adjustment layers, this is the main layer that I need us to understand. Because in this layer, we have just conducted a camera row. And a camera row is the basics of this, you know, uh, editing uh, tutorial. So these other layers are just to add in some, uh, you know, life in the image but the basic layer is this uh, color grade layer and after that I, I did something with the eyes the left eye and the right eye i also did something with the hair and i i did a lot a uh, bit of dodging and burning and then i did an overall you know uh brightness so let me delete this layer first so that we can start from scratch so first of all you'll make a copy of the image so make sure that the background is selected and hit ctrl j on your keyboard to make a copy then we shall call this copy color grade so before we add in the camera row we shall turn this layer into a smart filter to do that make sure the layer is selected go to filter then convert to smart filters you can decide to say don't show it again but for me i won't do that because i teach people and uh, i need them to understand this so i'll just say okay and uh, in a few seconds it will turn it into a smart filter yes it has now turned it into a smart filter and you can see by this icon here now i need us now to do the camera row so i'll just come to filter and then select camera row then allow it to load as it is loading if you are visiting this youtube channel for the first time i would like you to hit that subscribe button and not only hit the subscribe button but also uh, turn on the notification so that you my friend cannot miss any tip trick or tutorial that we offer in Aero Productions. You can also support me on Patreon. You'll find a link in the description so that you can keep Aero Productions free for everybody forever. Now, it has loaded. The first thing I want us to do, I want to conduct a split toning. So if you hover on the top layers here, uh, you'll find split toning here. And you, when you hover on, you just uh, highlight the split toning. So I just select that. And here we now want to deal with the highlights and then deal with the shadows and then I'll explain what balance means. So first of all, I would like us to deal with the shadows. So here I can increase the U from my left to my right uh, just like this. But you see it is not changing. Why? Because the saturation is at zero. So once you increase the saturation to something like 80, you will see now it is now changing uh, gradually. But then what I usually do, I return the saturation to zero, then I hold Alt. Once you hold Alt and try to turn, it will assume that the saturation is at 100%. So I will turn until I find a color that I need in the shadows. For me, I like the blue color, so I may want it to be there. So once I have done that, now I will increase the saturation gradually until I feel like it is well saturated. So once you increase them, you will see the image will start turning uh, slowly by slowly. So we will increase at up to a point that, you know, will be favorable for you. For me, I think 85 is, is okay. So I'll leave it at 85. Then I'll also do the same to the highlights. I'll come here, hold Alt, and try now what color do I want in the highlights. And I think yellow will do, or brown will do better here. Something like that. Then I will also increase the saturation to a number that I feel it is well, you know, uh, lit. So I think also in the 80s, something like, let me do it 85, just like that. You can see it has added uh, some good thing in this our image you can even see it here so what balance means is that if i move towards the highlights or towards my right i will change like the highlights will move towards the right then if i move towards the left i'll be now affecting the shadows let's try that if i move this way you see the image 
turns yellowish and remember in the highlights we selected the yellow, the yellow then if i turn towards my left it turns to bluish so that is basically what balance means so then i will want to change it maybe i need some of the bluish so i'll do something like uh, i think i think i'm satisfied with the, let me do it negative six i think negative six is good for me so uh, that is all you'll do in split toning. The next thing I want to do is the basic. So you'll come to the uh, tab of basic. If you're over here, you'll see basic. Just click there. And here we will change a number of things. So for example, the, uh, the exposure. If I increase the exposure, it will be too bright. If I reduce it, it will be too dark. So what I want to do, I just want to reduce it a little bit. Not that much. Just want to do like a uh, year. That that's okay. Just to add in the 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 mood. I don't want it to be too bright. So I'll do negative 0 0.30. Then if you want to pump anything in Photoshop or in Camera Raw, you have to increase the contrast. So I will increase the contrast as I look at my image. I don't do over 50. So maybe for this image, I will uh, let me see. I think 37 is okay. You can bear witness. 37 is okay. Then on the highlights. I just need to, I don't, in fact, I may not add the highlights because at the, at the, we will add adjustment layers which will deal with the lighting. But then let me just pump it a little bit higher, not that much. Uh, maybe, let me do what? Positive six. I think positive six is okay. Then I'll come to shadows. Now, when I take them to my right, I will be adding some light, you know, in the image. If I take it towards my left, I'll be darkening them. But then for me, I just need to at least add some life. So I will add some. I think positive 43 is okay. That is okay. Then in the whites, I'll also want to increase the whites just like that. Maybe to something like uh, also 40. I think uh, the whites, let me, let me reduce them a bit to something like, I think 38 is okay. Then the blacks. I'll want now to reduce the blacks, at least to give it that mood. And by the way, if I hold Alt and start to increase this, I will see the affected areas. But for this tutorial, I don't mind the affected areas, provided the image looks pretty good. I don't mind uh, what you call, I mean, I don't mind where it will affect, but I just need it to be as beautiful as possible. I think negative, negative 4 is okay for me, for this image. And by the way, if you want to download this image and follow along, you know what to do. Check a link in the description and download it. Then I'll move to textures. I just need now to just add a bit of it. Let me add as I look my, let me add as I look at my image. I think positive 14 is okay. It, it is adding some textures on the, on the, on the, on the skin and even on the cheeks and all that. I think positive 13 will do then um clarity i will also want to increase the clarity a bit let me increase you see the image is now becoming even more beautiful i think positive 25 is okay dehaze let me try dehaze if i take it this way and if i take it this way i think that's too much um let me see. You'll just play around with these figures to see which one suits your your image. I think I think 35 is okay. It's giving it that mood, and you know, it's it's beautiful. That's okay. Vibrance. Now there's a difference between saturation and vibrance. When I I change the saturation, it changes all the pixels. It affects all the pixels. So if it is brightness, it will increase the brightness of all the pixels. But that is not what I want. Vibrance will only take the brighter, you know, pixels and increase their brightness or take the darker pixels and reduce their brightness. So that's what I want to do. So I want to pump it a bit, but not that much to something like, you know, I think, I think uh, I may not go to i mean above 10 maybe let me do positive five just like that i think on the basics we have uh, uh finished 
uh, what I needed to, you know, show you. Then the next thing I want to do, I just need to add some sharpness to the image. You can see, you know, to the face and I just need it to be, I mean, that beautiful. Let me just zoom out so that you can see. I just need to add some sharpness. And you see the the textures we added, they made uh, the image to be so beautiful. I think I just need some sharpness on the edges here and there. So I'll come to this this tab called detail. It is having the sharpness. And what I want to do, I want to, what I usually do, I just take this to 100 or to the maximum. Then I will start now uh, playing around with this, you know, radius. I can hold Alt to see how it affects, just like that. You know, I don't want to affect it much. I think that one shows where it will affect. So I may not want to go so much, but I think 0 0.6 is okay, just like that. Also, the detail, I'll also want to change it a bit. If I hold Alt, I think it will show me, just like that. And I don't want also to affect it so much. So I think 28 is okay. Then after that, I will now reduce the, to a favorable uh, size, I will now reduce this amount to where I think it suits this image. So I think uh, it will not go beyond 50. I think 48 or 49 is okay. So it has added some life to the image. And maybe the last tab on uh, on this uh, camera row, I just need to, you know, add some vignetting. So I'll come to a tab called effects. Then I will now want to, uh, you know, let me pump this up just like this to 100. You see it's changing something. Then I want to take the roundness to zero and also take the feather to this far end. Then I want to zoom in, I mean zoom out, so that I see how it's affecting. So after that, I will also want to change, I'll, I'll change the, the midpoint. You can see how it's affecting, just like that. So after that, I will want to increase my roundness so that I see what I'm doing. So if I increase it, how, where do you want it to affect? Just like that. So I just need it to affect that part. Then the midpoint, uh, I think that was too far. Let me, let me do just like that. So I want it to affect that part. Then I'll also want now to increase, you know, the feather, you just add in some feather so that those sharp edges do not affect it. So I'll just, you know, try to change the feather so that it is favorable. I think that's okay. Then I'll now want to, you know, deal with the amount. I don't want it to be that, you know, sharp. So just need a bit of it. Just need to take the concentration of someone who is looking at this image to, you know, uh, the face only. So I think, I think I was removing, you know, I'm talking much, but I think, uh, just need to do maybe negative 33. Negative 33 is okay. By the way, you can add in gain if you want to, but uh, I don't think I will add, but you can just add in some grain. But for me, we dealt with the texture. So I think that's, that's very fine. So this is all that you have to do on this. So once you are satisfied, you'll hit OK. Then Photoshop will load and allow you, you know, to see the after image. And you'll realize that we've done a pretty good job. And if you've been following along, I'm sure that you will be doing something uh, good. So allow it to load. And as it, as it loads, if this uh, video is helpful to you, I would like you to give us thumbs up and also share this to your friends so that they can learn this. So this is what we've done. So let me show you the before. That is before and this is after. We've made a great, great uh, progress. So the next thing I want to do, I want to at, uh, at least, you know, these eyes, I need to give them some life. So what I'll do, I'll create a, an adjustment layer, curves adjustment layer. By the way, every tutorial I do, <laughs> most of the time I don't end, you know, without having curves. So what I'll do, I will increase the brightness. 
just drag this towards my center just like that and also in the in the eyes i will need a bit of the yellow so what will i do i will go to blues because blue is the opposite of yellow so i'll reduce the blues to give some yellow not too much and not too low i think that's enough so once that is done you see it's affecting the whole image but i just want to limit it to the eyes so first of all i can rename this to left eye just like that and i'll make sure the mask is selected then hit control i on my keyboard so that it creates a negative mask i will zoom in so that i will have the eye just like that then i will now <coughs> you know take my brush hit b on the keyboard or just select it from here make sure that it is a round soft brush hardness to zero then make sure that the foreground color is white you can hit d to reset it and hit x to toggle between white and black so i will just come and paint in with white in the background just like that at least it adds some you know life to this if you feel that the brightness is not the one that you want to increase just double click here and come here and increase the brightness further and by the way if you realize that the light is from this left eye so it's it should be a bit uh, brighter and paint here make sure the flow oh let me let me take the flow all over to 100 make sure the flow is 100 so that you don't paint a lot of you know times you just paint a little and you can see i can turn it on and off so that is on that is off so i want to remove the extras what you do hit x to toggle between black and white and now remove this excess when black is as the foreground when you're dealing with the masks black conceals white reveals that is the basics if you want to understand this i think i did a video on that you can find it in the link description so let me see this is before this is after but i also want to do away with it in the iris in the pupil i mean let me do it away from the pupil so the iris only will be bright let me see the before this is before and this is after so i think that's fine now we need now to do the right eye so what i'll do i'll make a copy of this make sure the layer is selected and hit ctrl j then rename this to uh rename it to right eye then you can see it's still bright it's because i've not moved that so i'll just move it from here to this other end and position it do not worry we shall make some corrections i just copied it to make my work easier just position it if you feel it's not that fine just come to the mask take the brush and make sure the foreground color is white and start painting so that you paint exactly where you want and here i think we need uh, let me give it more more yellow so i just reduce it further just like that and increase the general uh I'll i think the light is from my left so i will reduce the brightness just like that select the mask and paint so let me see the before that is before and that is after so we remove the extras hit x to toggle between white and black and just remove this extra uh, you know lighting so that it only is on the eye i'll also remove from the pupil and let me see before and after before after so let me zoom out so that you see the eyes better so this is you know before the eyes and this is after we have now put some light in the eyes if you feel that the right one is too dark you can reduce the opacity to something like 90 so that it is a bit darker just like that so that this one remains brighter and this one is a bit darker so we we are done with the eyes 
but then i feel like uh, you know this hair here i just need like the you know the light is from somewhere here so i need to do something with this so i'll add a, another adjustment layer just curves and make sure that um you know pumping the brightness just increasing the brightness just like that and i'll also need uh i'll need some yellow so i'll reduce the blues to give me the yellows that i need yeah i think that's okay i'll also now select the mask and hit control i then i will take my brush make sure the foreground color is white i will increase the size of my brush let it be soft then i just paint here that is not okay control z increase it further and just paint it here just like that i'll also do here just like that i think it has added some light you know in the image so that you know you see where the light is coming from and all that so once that is done so this is before this is after but it's affecting part of the you know part of the face so what i'll do i'll i'll take my brush make sure the foreground color is black and also remove it from the part of this you know face so that it is only on the hair just need it to be on part of the hair not in the face it is not bringing a good image let me see now this is before and this is after i think now it's it's fine at least it is not affecting the face so much so we shall name this to hair flare just name it hair flare so that you know it's good to name your layers i can collapse this so let's let me show you before and after so this is before this is after i think we are somewhere but i need to make a few adjustments and by the way these are just bonus because what we were really concentrating on was this color grade the camera roll the other the other addition things that i'm putting on is just to you know give life to this but you can even stop at you know color grade if your image is okay no worries so these are just things that you know i'm adding in to make it more beautiful now i want to do dodging and burning and dodging is just making uh, brighter brighter parts and burning is making uh, darker parts so i just need to make at least when the light is hitting the hair at least part of the hair is bright and also part of the body is bright and other parts i need them to make them a bit you know dark so i'll make an adjustment layer and it still curves and in the curves i need to deal with the hair first so what i'll do i will increase the brightness just like that then i will also need the yellows so i'll go to green i mean blue and reduce or subtract the blues i'll also need uh, some magenta so I'll, the opposite of magenta is green so i'll go and reduce some greens so at least i have some magenta not too much of it just like that and come to the general tab and uh, you know try to increase the brightness to something like that i'll name this dodge it's not a must you name but it's good to name select the mask and hit control i then i will now want to you know paint when the white is in the uh, foreground and just paint here and there not all over just a few parts that i feel should be bright just like that and somewhere here so that they are a bit bright not all over so you'll be painting somewhere i think i did something wrong here just hit x and re erase that hit x continue painting where you feel it should be bright and i think what i can do let me just control z so that i don't feel like it is that natural someone will you know look at the image and feel like it's not natural so i've gone back to uh, square zero so what i want to do I, let me just reduce the flow i need to do it something like 15 i think that was too much let me do 14 uh, let me just do 15 then start painting 
yeah, I think that's now more natural because that was so harsh just to do it where you feel that there should be some brightness just paint over even here and these hairs make them a bit brighter let me see before and after this is before this is after so it has added a little bit of the brightness in the hair and I think that's that's so beautiful. I think I should add some here. This is just making your image more beautiful and more, you know, appealing. And once you post it somewhere, someone will say, I need this photographer. And that photographer, of course, will look for you and say, you know, I need you to edit these images. And by the way, I'm editing the images at a, a good price. So in case you are a photographer and you're looking for someone who can edit your images into beautiful images, I, will, I am very willing to help. And uh, I think we can do business together. So I think that's the far much I can do because I think I've added some light to that. So I'm through with that. Then I want to dodge. I need this uh, this part not to be that bright. So I'll make another adjustment layer, curves. You know, curves are really <laughs> are really good, you know, in these things. So I'll just uh, add a little bit of light, but not that much. Then I'll come to blue. I need some yellow, but not too much. Just reduce it a little bit, just like that. I'll also need some magenta, so I'll come to green and reduce the green so that I can get some magenta just like that let me let me see if cyan will do something because red is opposite of cyan let me see if I add in cyan I think it's bringing some good mood then I'll I'll name this to dodge I mean burning just name it to burning then I will select the mask and now hit control I then I want to take my brush Make sure the foreground color is white and the flow is at about 15. Then I'll paint on this side so that it's not that too much bright. Let me see before and after. This is before. This is after. I think I'll add in some flow to around 21 and try to paint now. just like that let me see before before after I, I don't know if you can see the difference I think it's it's adding something good maybe there's too much of yellow so I'll just come back double click on this icon and come back to blue I don't like the yellow so I'll uh, reduce the yellows to something like that We'll also come to this tab and add in some magenta. I think magenta does good. And and I'll come back to my mask now paint to just add that small difference. Small difference. Let me see. This is before. This is after. I think now it's good. Can do also on this cheek here. Don't want her to be so pale. Need some magenta here and there. It also can do here. Just like that. Let me see now. This is before. And this is after. I think it's it has done some good thing. So this is our image. Let me show you the overall before and after. Just scroll to the last image and see. So this is before. And this is after. But I think it is too harsh. So I'll need to add the last. And I promise this is the last adjustment layer just add curves and then i will on this i'll just want to reduce the brightness a bit so i'll come here and just drag this a bit down to somewhere like there not too much like that and i'll call this overall overall brightness sorry brightness just like that i think yeah it has added some good thing then um, 
you you remember we turned this into a, a filter a smart filter so we can change some things i think i want to change something with the the shadows i think i i need just to pump them up a bit so just double click on camera row and allow it to load uh, if your machine is faster it will load faster of course so now it has loaded i'll come to this tab called tone curve and make sure that the point is selected then i will raise this a bit but not too much to somewhere like there oh that's too much i needed it just like sorry i think yeah i think that's okay it has added something on the you know on this uh, shadows just say okay once you're satisfied and allow it to apply that filter as it is applying uh, remember to like this video also to share and not forget to subscribe and also to turn on the notification so that you my friend cannot miss any tip trick or tutorial now it has loaded and i think it has added something let me allow me group this so that it is easier to you know see them just hit control g and uh, so this is before this is after so my friend, this is how to color grade like a pro in Photoshop. And I hope this video was helpful to you. So give us thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, share. You can also support me via Patreon. So you find a, a link in the description so that you can keep Aero Productions free for everyone forever. Otherwise, let's meet in the future tutorials. Until then, remember to keep creating.